Hello, all you Mayhem Makers. I'm Mindy with Quilting Mayhem, and today we have a guest, Miss Lynette Fulton from Handy Quilter, with us today. And of course, the fabulous Miss Debbie, you Hello. know, my, my partner in crime. And today we're talking about thread. And since Lynette is here in town for a Handy Quilter event, which has been so much fun, so much education, we thought we'd ask her to join us in talking about thread because she has a lot of experience with long arm thread. But I thought. I'll go over some basics and then uh, we'll let her chime in on some of her thoughts and information for the long arm part of thread. But first of all, oh, coffee. Morning. Thank goodness. Yes, thank you, Java House. We're going to give them a plug today. Uh, we love our local coffee shop. They're keeping us caffeinated. It, it's, they're amazing. Um, so thread in general, thread education. There is multiple kinds of thread. So when you come to, say, a quilt shop, and you go, I need thread, you may get that look first of like, okay, well, what kind of, <laughs> what kind of thread? Um, because you don't realize how many different kinds and how many different brands you have until you try to collect them for thread education. <laughs> <laughs> um, there may be at least like 20 different threads here to talk about. And I'll, I'm not going to bore you. We'll keep it a little more brief. We're going to say high level thread education. Um, but please. If you want to know more about any of them, let us know or come to the shop. We'll gladly talk more in depth about any particular kind, but today we're going to keep it a little more <laughs> just basic informational. Uh, but some of our threads that I want to start out with, of course, is you have hand threads. So those of you that do hand embroidery or maybe you want to do some thicker thread for hand quilting, we do have such threads like Valdani. And then we just started getting in Wonder Phil's Eleganza. So if you're a Sue Spargo fan, you know, she likes a lot of Eleganzas, um, has some of her own threads and those kinds of things. These are what are called like an eight weight and a 12 weight. So when you start talking weight in threads, there is a difference. And so how they explain it is, you know, how much gets weighed on a scale is the, the number. So I just try to tell people the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. It, Seems counterintuitive, but that's kind of, it's just how it goes in the thread world. So an eight weight is a very thick, chunky thread, and so you don't get as much on there because it's bigger and bulkier, and that's why it's the number eight. Now, it will move up in your thread numbers, and the higher you get, you get all the way to 100. That's a really fine, fine thread. Beautiful for long arm quilting, and even the English paper piece, and you can do some hand work with those finer threads. So yeah. don't, don't think that, like, Hand work can only be certain threads, and that in general, like I was talking with Lynette in the beginning, like I, we go with the rule of like you can use lots of different threads for lots of different applications. Don't think that there's like hard fast rules about a lot of threads. There, it, we'll get down to some where certain threads won't fit, like in a machine needle. Then you have to be like, okay, unfortunately that doesn't work. Um, and so that's why we have our little demo needle here. So things that you will keep in mind is. If you're trying to do, say, a chunkier thread through your machine needle, you also have to make sure that needle will fit that thread. And that's a whole nother education mm -hmm. that we'll, we'll do that <laughs> another time. We'll do that a different day. But please understand that your needle size will need to match your thread. Not all of them are made equally. Right. And, and of course, needles are opposite of thread. Yes. Oh, the bigger the number, the bigger the needle. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So it. <laughs> We don't have any kind of consistency uniformity <laughs> in the quilty world, so I, it is a lot to know, and that's why I say, if you want to know more, please come ask us, because we will gladly explain to you, you know, what needles go with what threads so that they are happy together, otherwise you could end up with shredding, you can end up with looping, all those kinds of things. So I'm sure you get a lot of those questions, especially in the long arm world of like, why is it skipping? Why is it looping? And all of the that. Shredding. Mm -hmm. the shred, a lot of shredding. Right. Usually that's the biggest issue. And there are a lot of things that come into play. Once again, maybe we'll have you come back again and we'll just do a whole education day. <laughs> 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 How to figure all of that out. But you start with your basics or even like your Cosmo floss or uh, DMC, DMC. Mm -hmm. DMC flosses for hand embroidery. You know, you start with those. So yes, we... For you hand embroidery people, or you, you know, the, you want those chunkier threads, gotcha. we, we got you. All right, and then we kind of work into what I call piecing threads, but they can also be quilting threads. Um, mm -hmm. But it, generally in piecing, you do like a 50 weight. Most of the time, most people just stay like right mm -hmm. down the middle. Yeah, this is my favorite. 
<laughs> so we do carry Orophil. Orophil uh, is the one we recommend for a lot of your, your piecing your quilt pieces together, um, those kinds of things, and I get them in the, the big cones. Now, you can get them in a normal spool like this guy. Notice we have a color thing going on. I, I don't you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of funny how, you know, we have a lot of purple here. Don't worry. I've got this <laughs> other people covered. Oh, my God. <laughs> yellow. Yes. Um, <laughs> I know. Miss Debbie and her yellow. Um, but, yeah, so piecing, most of the time you'll hear 50 weight, all right? So then we also have your metler, which is a polyester, so you can get them in cottons. You can get them in polyesters. A lot of it, I will tell people, is your personal opinion versus piecing with cotton and piecing with polyester, okay? A lot of times polyester, because it is a stronger thread, because it is not a natural material, um, people sometimes say they're concerned of it wearing through the fabric, some of those kinds of things. Um, those are decisions you have to make on what, what is that quilt, that project, that garment, that Hello, whatever you're doing, you know, what is its longevity? How long do you expect it to last? Is it going to get washed a lot? A lot of those things come into play. Polyester is definitely really good more for like garments where you want that strength, your home deck, those kinds of things, right? You want those <coughs> things to last. We also have still uh, cotton and steel, which is a very lovely cotton thread. Um, if you want just smaller tastes, that's kind of what we have. It's on those smaller spools. Once again, usually garments, those kinds of things. Um, but if you do a lot of piecing like quilts, I yeah, I can go through a cone in a year. I do, I do a lot of piecing. So uh, you can definitely step up in a lot of the colors, uh, especially for aura fill. So you can get them in the smaller spools or the bigger spools. And what I'll make a note of is that the smaller spools, we have in stock a lot of the colors mm -hmm. of the larger cones. If there's a color that we don't have, we can special order that for you. Yes. Always ask. Always so if you're looking for something, ask us if we have it, if we can get it, all that. We definitely, we have ways. Just say, we have ways. We have connections. We have a few <laughs> connections. Um, and you can also use Orofil for longer. Right? Yes, you could. If that's um, the cotton and the look that you want. Yes. Yes. Because definitely, and we'll get to different looks. Because there is a difference when you start picking um, your threads uh, for longer and those kinds of things. Then, you know, we have a bunch of lovely, wonderful threads. These are great. Unfortunately, I can't really show them on camera. They don't come through. Some of them are shinier, um, so your, your yeah, brows will shiny one. There's the super shiny, shiny one. Yeah. Um, and so if you start getting into decorative, especially like Debbie has shown them in the serger. Russell oh. has this just, yeah. glittery in it. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's delightful. Yes. So we have a variety of wonderful threads that have that variety of applications. So once again, some of them are that thicker weight if you want your thread to show more on your project um, versus maybe a shinier where it's making a decorative edge on a project, all kinds of different applications. So I, I love that we kind of have that nice variety plus variegated. I am water. I love, I love variegated. <laughs> I will quilt my quilts almost always with variegated versus solid. Mm. If I can, yes, yeah. I'm still a variegated queen. So, um, and then they come in different weights. So like this one from Wonderfill, this is uh, too fruity, or fruity, as they call it, fruity. And it is more of a 12 weight. So this one's a thicker one. This is gonna show on your project a lot more than say a variegated, like this one that's a 50 weight, all right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna keep that in mind. Um, I know a lot of you, when you're beginners, you're like, I don't want people really to see it because you're not confident. So keeping those things in mind as you pick threads um, is also kind of key. But And that 12 weight, uh, if you're not really familiar with the different weights and thicknesses, your 12 weight is kind of equivalent to the jean weight, if you yes. ever hemmed oh. pants. Yep. So. Yeah, so definitely that thicker thread. It's it's going to show. So keeping those things in mind. Um, of course, and then we have good old Isocore. So Isocore, we have here mostly for machine embroidery. So those of you that do machine embroidery, this is usually what we recommend. It is a shinier polyester. Mm -hmm. So your embroidery design is going to have a lot more sheen to it, a lot more, it, it won't come across as kind of a flat design. So that's 
the general recommendation, but once again, you can learn. You're just going to go through quite a few schools or ask for a bigger school. <laughs> yeah, and again, in Isacord, we can go ahead and order the larger cones. Um, I have quilted with Isacord because it's the exact color that I want for my quilt. Right. So, right. yeah. I've been known to do that. Yes. Many choices. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so many choices of thread. So, Isacor, once again, and as I said, a lot of threads have a lot of multiple uses. Uh, Wonderful, once again, we get into, say, like Deco Bob, um, which is generally more for your bobbin. So, a lot of times people will do a lighter weight thread in the bobbin, so the thread on the back side. It's not as thick, right? And you can quilt more on your bobbin. And you can quilt more on your bobbin. Mm -hmm. You can quilt longer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a nice feature where you don't care about the back side. You maybe don't care that that quilting pops through as much. You just want that front side to show. Um, so that's usually very common for that. And then, of course, we get back into you know some shiny, shiny, pretty threads and some variegated threads of different weights. Uh, this is a 30 weight, so not as thick as an 8, but definitely a little thicker, so, and a variegated. So if you do, once again, want that cool thing to show and you want variegated, um, that's what uh, this one, Mirage. They have great names. Wonderfield has some really fun names with their, their threads. Um, and then Spotlight is definitely very shiny, 40 weight, so if you really want, it's really like holiday quilts. Yeah. Some people like that really metallic thread. And Halloween. And all the Halloween, all the shiny metallic looking thread for that. So, uh, once again, lots of applications, right? And then we get into kind of the, the kings and queens of long ermine type threads. Yeah, the king thread, also this variegation. I love all the different colors that you're going to get in this variegation. If you can see that. And a lot of the long arm staple, what I call basic threads that we have. And we have both in, um, a lot of them are superior brand, and then we do have um, like the Orifil, some of those kinds of things. But we can also get in if there's something different you're looking for. Uh, but keep in mind, once again, some of them are going to be of varying weights, some are variegated, some are solid. Mm -hmm. And what I'm curious, Lynette, is when you are picking a thread for your quilt, mm -hmm. what do you put into mind when you're trying to decide what to use? Well, for example, with the Omni, wonderful, awesome thread, it gives, the regular Omni gives you a, more of a matte finish, a mm -hmm. flat, not, mm -hmm. not shiny, and uh, whereas some of the other threads uh, would be more uh, shiny, so that would be one thing. Um, this one has a lot of fluff. To it. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. a, little, a little bit of uh, lint. Really. A little more linty. Yes, yeah. and you yeah. do keep that in mind when you're going between cotton and polyester, mm -hmm. right? Is cotton is a little more linty. Mm -hmm. So keeping in mind that you're going to keep mm -hmm. up on cleaning out that bobbin area, and that's true for any threads and piecing. Is you, yeah. you want to keep on top of a your general maintenance, and that yes, some threads are going to be lintier mm -hmm. than lint. others. Mm -hmm. um, how about the importance of picking a good quality thread? Oh. <laughs> hands down, hands down. That's where you start. Is at a quality store because you have quality thread, and um, you know, I mean, if you're going to save a dime here, you're going to waste a dollar there. Um, it is. You just have to go with a good brand, and that's all I see here. I think I'm just going to take all of this, except for the yellow. Yes. I'll just take all this and, and have them ring it up. It's just, <laughs> I know. It's once you start putting it out and playing uh, with it. Uh -huh. well, you can't have this because it's mine anyway. <laughs> 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 um, so yes, and, and that is very true. And it comes to, like once again, you start talking about your project. You know, if you're putting a lot of mm -hmm. money and investment and time into you know, your quilts or any of your projects, your garment, your home deck, anything that you're making, mm -hmm. bags, if you're putting a lot of money and time into the outside, you want to make sure you're not cheaping out on the thread to quilt it mm -hmm. because it's just going to let you down later and then you're going to wonder why everything kind of went by the wayside. Well, because you cheaped out on your thread, so... Well, and there's another kind of thing you want to think about, you know, because... Um, some loving friend or family member whose aunt Sue died and she was a sewist and has all these threads. Here, 
I have all these threads for you. Well, you don't know how old they are. And so one of the tests that you can do is when you have that thread, kind of put it between both hands and tug on it. If it snaps like that, you just need to throw that away because it's either going to break while you're stitching or once you're done with whatever you're making, it can pop those threads. So be careful with that too. Yes, yeah, especially the cotton threads. Once again, it's a natural fiber. Yeah. So just like your fabric and your projects, you know, cottons do eventually break down over time. And so, yes, grandma's threads from 50 years ago, they have been slowly deteriorating over time. Yeah, because they're, they're out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and things like, you know, not having them stored in direct sunlight, some of those kinds of things. Sunlight will bleach out the color in your threads. Mm -hmm. Now, while they will say your threads are color fast and shouldn't bleed into your quilt, um, you still, sun damage will, will occur mm -hmm. no matter what. And if you're concerned about any kind of bleeding, whether it's from the fabric, from the thread, any of those, we always say, get the color catchers, throw a bunch in your laundry, wash that quilt, it'll pull mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. that may decide to go astray. Um, and generally, if you're using higher quality threads, higher quality fabrics, you shouldn't have a bleeding problem, you really shouldn't. Right. So, um, but color catchers, that's kind of that little safety net. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we have some of the tools that you can have to go with your threads. So some threads, because of how they're wound, uh, may need what they call a horizontal spool pin. And so on your domestic machine, you most likely have one. So you have a vertical one that goes straight up, and then you'll have a horizontal one that goes to the side. And I'll let you show that. Okay. And some threads just behave better coming off the top from the side of the machine versus spooling up the, the vertical pin. Um, they put this together so that if your machine has a, um, a hole that accepts a screw, you can put this in if it doesn't have another, an extra post. But um, you would just place this <laughs> and wake you up. Yeah. And um, you place it on the post and you want the this post to be angled up a little bit so when your spool is on there, it won't just spin right off. Now, Good point. Right. Thank you. Yeah. No. See, this is why we have you. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing's um, And then if your um, spool of thread has a slit in it, um, you want to make sure that your thread does not go by that slit because I guarantee you, you'll, it, it'll you'll catch it. Yep. So now the thread can come off right. horizontally. Yeah, thankfully this one does not, but a lot of some of the older ones, mm -hmm. you will see a notch. So make yeah. sure that notch is going to be facing to the bottom end of the pin, so mm -hmm. as that thread's coming off. That yeah. is definitely, you know, you forget about things. Mm -hmm. So I made another angle. I like that. Good point. Yes. Um, and then, of course, so this is one that's made for, you know, the handy quilter long arm. But, you know, other machines may have this option for you to add a pin to your yeah. machine. And then... Uh, thread stands. So if you're like me and you use a big old cone because you do a lot of quilting, yeah, you would then want a thread stand. And what happens for your domestic machine, this is when we're talking domestic sewing, um, this would sit like behind your machine and then the thread would come up oh. off of it and then feed and then into your domestic machine. machine. So this yeah. is kind of a add-on tool so that you can use bigger cones or weird cones that maybe don't fit, even some, you know, they may be smaller, but they don't fit the top of your machine or inside mm -hmm. your machine, mm -hmm. then you would want to get a thread mm -hmm. stand, which of course we carry here. And I know that not every thread that's on a cone, but I haven't seen a single wound, but these are cross wound, so they're going to come off, you know, really easily. Yes. So, okay. And then Debbie, what do you have in front oh of you? Oh my goodness. So if you <laughs> do embroidery, we have the multiple spool holder. Yes. Where you can put, you can see the pins where we have multiple spools, and then you bring your thread up and over and then onto your machine. So you're able to um, house your threads on there. So at home, if I'm not uh, doing embroidery, I will have multiple bobbins with uh, different colored threads on it. So I just, I stack those on here. So that's a, another use that I well, yeah, because a lot of times in embroidery, you have like a dozen different spools of thread that it's calling for. And mm -hmm. then if you're me, I'm like knocking them into my garbage can. and all. So it's nice to have yeah. that where you just kind of line them up and you can 
every time it says, okay, change to this color, you're just pulling it from the top and it's yeah. ready to go. Because, um, yeah, my room might be you know, a little messy. It might be a little klutzy. You know? <laughs> so that makes it easy. And that will fit on most Bernina machines. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is nice. Um, what other long arm thread tips do you have, maybe? Anything else we haven't covered? Um, quality. It goes without saying, if it's giving you grief, pass it on to a, a, a forever home. And um, <laughs> somebody <laughs> else's problem. Pass it on. They may love it. Well, that is very true. We were we were talking about that, where some people will be like, this doesn't work on my machine. Well, there, there's, there's no rule that says, like, that, especially long arm threads, they're meant for long arms. It mm -hmm. just may not cooperate with how you're working with it or your project and those kinds of things. So You know, one of the things we don't have on here is our searcher thread. That, that so did, that's, can... those cones are large cones. Sometimes people will use those for piecing or, you know, quilting, and we don't recommend that. Yeah. It's yeah, the way that those are spun. It's a little different. In, in a searcher, you're typically using two, three, four, five threads. So, yeah that you get your strength that way. Mm -hmm. Well, and really, the only way you learn what threads you like and those kinds of things is by trying them out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we always encourage trying different threads, trying different things. Um, and maybe keeping a journal of, um, you know, I love those composition notebooks. Yes. And then you can uh, write happy things on this combination of thread. And then um, you were saying about long arm, always test your tension. Yes. Always look oh, at it critically. Please. Tom yes. And Bob and For the love of all things quilty. Yeah. Test your threads exactly. before you just start quilting. Because the last thing you need is a hot mess in your quilt. Because you didn't test to make sure that the bobbin was the right tension to go with the top thread. Because there is a difference. The, mm -hmm. Especially in long arms, you want to make sure that that bobbin tension and what thread you're using in there, especially if it's different from the top, mm -hmm. you know, they're all going to play differently. And I do a lot of long arming where my bobbin is different, you know, like we were talking the deco bob. I may have like a deco bob in the bottom and a king tut on the top. Mm -hmm. They're different weights, different types, all that kind of stuff. So play with it. And same with domestic. Like, I get people that are like, I never touch the tension dial. Oh, yeah. my. Well, <laughs> that, we, were, we were told that in seventh grade. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I swear, yeah, in the beginning, like, I think the, the nuns with the rulers came out and right. said, don't touch the tension on the top or something. Right. But yeah, don't be afraid on your machine, whether, well, tension dial or it's a control in your, you know, somewhere on your machine, you can control that top thread tension. Please play with that. We give you the power, yeah, okay? The you have all the permission <laughs> mm -hmm. to play with that top tension because it will make a difference in how that thread works. And if you yeah. have one, like, you really want to play with it, play with the tension. Yep. Your machine mm -hmm. will learn how to work with it if you just adjust mm -hmm. that tension and play with it a little more to get it to its happy place because it, yeah. it is kind of sad when people I happen to be like, I can't make this work and then I will go and touch the tension and go, it works just fine for me and they're like, oh, oh well, I don't, I don't touch, touch that, I don't touch that. And you're like, it's okay. So, you know, be, be playful with yeah. it. Yeah, and, and I've had a couple of thoughts on the uh, 12 weight or the eight weight thread. Uh, those can be used in your loopers of your searcher. Mm -hmm. And then also on your domestic machine, there's something called bobbin work. So mm -hmm. that's something too, mm -hmm. that you can use those thicker threads where you're not gonna be able to get those in the upper needle. Mm -hmm. Or you can couch them. Couch. Oh, couch your oh, oh, yes. Or stitching on your sewing. Couch. Yes. One other thought would be to match the color value of on the top thread and the bobbin. Yes. You don't have to have exactly the same color pink and peach, you know, they're going, they're going to play well together. Yes, yeah. keeping that in mind, especially when you're playing with tension and those kinds of things, is that, yes, if you're using a black on the bottom and the white on the top, mm -hmm. you may see one over the other, and so you will need to keep that in mind of playing with tensions, playing with threads, and thread choices, and that was one of the rules yeah, I was taught, was at least try to keep your bobbin thread and that top thread at least close. They don't, mm -hmm. yeah. they don't have to be exact, yeah. once again. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say... If you have a white on top and a black uh, thread in the bobbin, you will see them yeah. either on the top or the bottom. Not maybe, you will. Mm -hmm. So just be aware of that. Well, but once you wash it, yes, that may go away. So if it's a little bit, so keep in mind those OCD. I know you're out there, you OCD people. <laughs> if you 
see just little bits. Sometimes you can let that go because yes, once you wash, if it's a quilt, once you wash it, it, everything will puff up and crinkle up and it gets, everything kind of marries down inside in that mm -hmm. batting. So yes. if you're talking quilting, yeah, don't worry. Some of that can solve itself in the wash and just let it, let it go. Because if you're determined, especially if the quilt backing is black and the top is mostly white and you don't want white in your bobbin, yeah, you just learn to let certain things go to go with your project. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many things and we could talk for probably hours about thread, but um, I think that's a lot of the basics and a lot of it is we're going to give you permission to play and have mm -hmm. fun, yeah. to try it out. Um, and then if you're having any problems, just come see us. And I, I love that some of you that I've helped have, you know, brought me treats for helping you. <laughs> so, you know, she's not bribing you or anything. <laughs> We just like helping out. I don't need treats afterwards, and it is much appreciated for those of you that do that. So I just want to thank you guys and be like, yes. the staff appreciates it. We appreciate it, you know. So, um, but you know, just let us know. Just don't be frustrated. And even if you're at home, call us. Go. I'm sitting in front of my machine. It's doing this. We may not be able to help you, but we certainly can give it a try, um, and maybe get you through that frustration so that you're sewing happily in your project, whatever it is, whether it is bags, garments, home deck, quilting, long, all, all the things. Yeah. Um, we have definitely a, a good staff of people with a lot of knowledge, so we'd love to help you out. So I think this was more than enough yeah. education for everybody. I hope you enjoyed our lovely morning of uh, caffeine, because yes. this is a must in the Pacific yes. Northwest, Woo. and for education. Have a lovely day. Keep on stitching.